I have no dirt on Justin. None at all. Long live uh, the tropical Wellington summer. Comedy gold. Comedy gold. Oh, just a guy that works in the office. Episode 72 with Wellington Mayor Justin Lester chatting Liverpool cities, entrepreneurship and tech. Published 28th of February 2018. This is a show talking with innovators, creatives and enterprises, making positive dents on society, summarised as the show title, twice. We capture and share authentic conversational stories, learns and journeys to now. I'm your co-host, David Binstead, and I'd like to gratefully acknowledge show support from BizDojo and Collider Wellington, and also audio hosting support from our Patreon crowd. Our early 2018 shows have featured people in the volunteer philanthropy and civic spaces. Rounding out that mini-series, we're stoked to chat at length with Wellington Mayor Justin Lester. This is the second tightly edited part of that conversation. Make sense of some of the references by listening to the first part published last week. We rejoin the conversation and chat about the improbable magic of moving people around a city with so little going wrong. Yeah, it's fascinating really, isn't it? Um, look, I think we're fortunate um, and certainly in terms of the base that we have, um, we've got the highest public transport usage in the country. We have about 17% of people that walk into work every day, which is great because otherwise all of our roads would be full. Uh, so that's really good. Um, and we need balance. Um, look, I'm the first uh, to admit, um, look, what's great for me, I can run into work, I can bike into work, um, but that doesn't fit for everybody. It certainly doesn't fit if you're coming from Porirua or Upper Hutt. Uh, you might have the option of the train, which is good, um, but if you're a tradie, uh, if you're a mum with young kids, uh, if you're dropping people off in various different locations, we need balance. And so I'm um, on the record of saying, I, I, in a perfect world for me, you'd have a third, a third, a third. Uh, private transport, public transport, walking and cycling. That's my aim. I almost don't even want to ask about cycle lanes, but I, I don't. I, I want to park a particular thorny issue and maybe talk in more general terms about, I mean, NZTA's um, proof of investment in cycling being hugely beneficial in health, societal, community, business terms. Kind of like there's no downsides apart from people's fear of actually getting on the bike in the first place because there's these hunks of two tonnes of steel flying around everywhere. When it's all done and the cycling infrastructure is in and completed, and it'll take time, it'll evolve, I think people will say, I'm really glad we did that. Um, it's a bit painful uh, in the transition from not having much to implementing it, um, but it's money well spent. Ever encourage um, Chinese bike share to, uh, I was about to say, dump their bikes on the streets uh, without any uh, infrastructure to support it or... Uh, have you had discussions? Uh, we've had discussions, and I've seen firsthand um, the offerings they have in China, uh, which are a bit messy, to be honest. There's bikes everywhere, uh, and some of them beginning to fail, uh, the, the share companies. I uh, had a discussion at a City Lab event over in Paris um, with one of the providers that operates in a number of different cities internationally. I've had a look at the system up in Auckland. Um, I wouldn't advocate for a public system. I wouldn't support it. If it's going to operate on a commercial basis, I think great. The wonderful thing about Wellington is um, it is so compact, particularly in the CBD, you can get everywhere on foot. Um, so that's a consideration. One other negative drawback um, for a bike share system in New Zealand, and one of the reasons why it failed in Melbourne, I believe, is um, the requirement of a helmet uh, is a, a drawback for a lot of people because uh, you don't carry them around and you don't want to share somebody else's. Um, so that's one thing uh, you'd need to get around. Um, so it's worth considering but I'm just not sure we're quite there yet work in progress there's something to think about uh, and if someone I, I watch with interest switched on bikes and, and Ryan and his team and how they go down the waterfront there just with e-bike hire and, and bike hire and whether that company might evolve they came through the low carbon challenge uh, and so there's, there's good hope and it's certainly very supportive uh, but I want to make sure we did it on a commercial basis rather than just trying to throw a whole lot of money in it and see if it worked if there wasn't the demand you're not a great cyclist, are you, Victoria? I'm unstable on my feet on the terrace, so I think putting me on a bike is a really bad idea. Joseph, cyclist? Yeah, yeah, I like cycling. I cycled to school for nine years when, when I was young, and I still like biking around, but I try to do it early in the morning before there's too many cars on the road. Quick talk about business. Carpi. 
Yeah, it's good fun. It's um, it's business we've had going for almost twelve years now. Uh, I have to be honest and say that um, I've completely dropped the ball. My job was to um, to grow it into a, a national business and into other cities, uh, but I got distracted along the way by local government. Um, and so I'm very fortunate. I've got a business partner who runs it for me. Was that, was that your first startup venture from university? In effect, or did he try a few others and then settle on it? Uh, first. F- yeah, fully fledged entry into the business world. I had a number of different things I'd done along the way, um, uh, and that was yeah. Settled down, and I'm going to commit to this. I'm going to throw some serious money at it, and um, it's been great, and it's been good fun, and no, I've really enjoyed the ride. Enjoyed the ride um, again, unquoted as being able to go mortgage free from the uh, success of it. So. Yeah, that's probably more to do with the fact I'm quite frugal as well. Um, <laughs> I, I don't waste a penny. Uh, uh, yeah, so I've been fortunate in that respect. Homemade Valentine's card for uh, for this today? <laughs> probably just a friendly text <laughs> with a couple of emojis. <laughs> uh, we're, not, we're not terribly commercial about these things. Good stuff. Talking about bris- business briefly, though, in Wellington, there's this thriving tech scene, which is kind of like a, quite a new and strongly pulsing heart of business in, in, in the Wellington region, but also a little bit of a failure as well with great work with Luxy recruitment pack campaign but kind of got a little bit stung as well with the um, kind of security side of things plenty of learns there I guess for the future yeah well what it did show is this huge demand for people to come from all over the world to move to Wellington and come get a job here uh, if you provide them the opportunity that's great um, and I was at Zero HQ opening a couple of weeks ago now too with Roger and you know, the commitment in Wellington 600 odd staff here and, uh, and we talked about uh, the whole notion of corporate drift and that's over that's, it's, it's a relic of the past and that's when um, certain companies like Fonterra and some other bank head offices moved north to Auckland um, to be closer to the largest market and often because the CEOs wanted to live there uh, look in Wellington now we're creating new companies um, that are being started by great entrepreneurs um, that tend to be local and they, they grow them uh, and Roger is a brilliant example of that you know Sam Morgan did the same with Trade Me guys like Steve O'Connor who headed up Creative HQ and has gone went to set up Flick uh, Power Shop and Ari and the team there came out of Meridian as a subsidiary and they've got a couple hundred employees um, out in Newtown I think they're moving back into town now uh, so it's good to see these local businesses starting and that's to be honest um, that's how it should be you don't attract corporates back in necessarily you're not going to subsidise for them to come back um, uh, we want to grow them look see from my perspective an absolutely incredible advertising campaign for the city which I think has possibly in m- most degrees has far exceeded its ambitions to actually attract people and it's had the side benefit of raising profile which could only be a good thing yeah it's great for the city's reputation i had a friend um i studied with in, in germany from the ukraine who sent me uh the link back to look see and in, in ukrainian russian uh and and another one from brazil um so yeah quite diverse countries and ever have any regrets with, with your own businesses that you didn't start up your own tech firm you've gone like for quite an analog business are uh, there still time watch this space <laughs> uh, <laughs> when, digital when salads one, yeah when one has more time uh, look it's more about creating something um, that you believe in really and, and most business principles are similar I've got no IT skills um, they're about as good as my handy person skills um, uh, but um, if you've got a good idea and you surround yourself with good people then you can always make something work this being the sixth and final in the series sub-series about volunteering and philanthropy and civics how important do you think volunteering is now in contemporary society oh it's massively important it makes the world go round I mean I think we have something like 4,000 volunteers in Wellington and the city would grind to a halt without them um, I look back I guess you always uh, you have your personal experience that inform your, your, your future decision making and um, uh, we didn't have a car growing up uh, yeah mum didn't and have the ability to get us around or even pay for us to get involved in sports so I had a good mate who lived down the road and his mum and dad would not only coach our sports teams they'd give me a ride every week to, to football or to cricket or whatever it was and, and without them or without the teachers volunteering their time it simply wasn't going to happen uh, so I'm hugely uh, grateful and indebted uh, for all of the support I had as a kid growing up and I think any other kid across New Zealand or Wellington likewise 
Uh, and so it's um, incumbent upon all of us to then give back and, and to, to pay off that debt. So it falls to me to talk about the future, which is one of my favourite places. Um, I, I, did some, I did some numbers, right? Uh, so it's 606 days from today, from record day, to the next election. So what are you 606? planning? 606? Yeah, I can, uh, yeah, the internet, that's what the internet told me. That can't be right. Could be. Oh, no, maybe it is. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, oh, well, the internet. You, you are right. The, oh, yes. Yeah, the internet's right. Um, so uh, what, are you, what, what are your, you know, the big things you're going to do between now and then? Um, build more houses uh, and certainly we'll have a concrete plan in place. Uh, but I'm chish, yeah. Uh, with Phil <laughs> Goff, sorry, Phil Goff. He he's a good guy too. Phil Twyford uh, around a, a, a housing accord for Wellington, uh, and so we want to lock that down this year. Uh, that's important. Uh, we also want to knock off these transport initiatives. Um, so we're going through the whole let's get Wally moving process at the moment. So we want to lock that down, do it once, and do it properly. Uh, and a small matter of a of a move museum owner get sorted out this year too and, and lock that down with Sir Peter Jackson Sir Richard Taylor and had a couple of really productive meetings over Christmas and want to just nail that down I think for Wellington it's important so it's still live oh yeah very much live um, but complex it's difficult totally. it's um, look $150 million on our side uh, which we've got in a budget um, but it's also a $50 million commitment on their side which is um, uh, no small matter yeah a lot of expectations from lots of different places people imposing their own views and what it should be. Yeah, there's a lot of private financial risk as totally. well. Um, so, uh, you know, we all hope it'll go well, but if it doesn't, uh, that mean, it could mean uh, be unfortunate. Trying to get a good result for everybody involved. Yes. And sometimes it doesn't always come off, even with the best of intent and, no. uh, and hopes and dreams and actions. So, I hear you. Where does the airport runway sit in that plan? Uh, it's a question of uh, when, not if, I think, but that when um, has a, a large time frame. Um, look, I think it's absolutely necessary for our city, uh, as um, for any international city. Um, if you want to encourage people to live there, um, you want to be connected to the world. Um, uh, look, we'd survive, we'd cope without it, but we'll, we'll, we'll certainly do better if we're more accessible. Um, uh, we've got a, had a good start in terms of attracting Singapore Airlines into Wellington, but at the moment, um, sufficient demand is not being illustrated uh, to warrant further investment. And until such time as it is, it's not going to go ahead. Okay. And what? So that, those are the things for you for the next six, the 606 days. What about? Well, that's that's the council and you. What about you? What are you going to be, you know, aiming for yourself? Look, those are the big issues that take a lot of time um, so there'll be a whole lot of small ones on a day to day basis and they'll be managing um, the relationships with all of the councillors um, uh, uh, responding to everything else that just occurs on a day to day basis uh, and a whole lot of um, community initiatives that are taking place all the time whether it be uh, a much smaller activity or, or building a, a new library in Johnsonville um, they're all important, uh, they're all important to people and we'll make sure that we do our best in representing the city. Mm-hmm. And would it be fair to assume you want to have another crack? Yeah, and no, I'm definitely going to, almost definitely going to have another crack. Um, and I said that right from day one. Mm. Oh, look, I'm not here for three years. Yeah. If you're going to make a go of it, you, you probably want to commit to two terms. Um, but I'm legitimately um, uncertain about the future beyond that. Yeah. Cool. Well, good luck. You. Yeah. Going to squeeze a few holidays in between now and then? Uh, a bit of personal time? Yeah, uh, we had a good break over. We went up to Tolaga Bay over Christmas. Um, oh, I have committed this year to spending a bit more time with my family. Uh, towards the end of last year was, to be honest, a bit of a blowout. And um, it's safe to say I think I blew a gasket personally. I uh, thought I was invincible and then turned out not. Um, so a bit more time at home uh, and yeah, enjoying oneself with family as well. All right, you're about halfway into our chat with Mayor Justin Lester, talking about what makes Wellington one of the greatest little cities on earth. My co-host is Victoria Spackman, Director at Te Oaha Institute for Applied Creativity, for this second of two episodes chatting with Justin. Our focus is sharing how our guests are striving to make positive dents on society, which is my overarching goal for this show, alongside revealing some of their why. My mission is to support and amplify purpose-led people movements via digital media formats and platforms such as this audio show, but also with short-form video. You can listen to the first episode with Justin and indeed over 70 tightly edited conversations via Apple Podcasts, Spotify and many other places. 
check the show notes and visit twicepodcast.com to see if where we hang out is where you hang out. Back to the conversation and posing one of the questions that usually gets to the heart of our guests' motivations. Whether or not we did this time, I'll leave for you to decide. We ask all of our guests about their first, their worst and their best jobs. Justin? I'll start with the best job and that's certainly the job I'm in right now. Um, uh, certainly from a, a professional um, so, well, from a professional side of things, uh, yeah, being mayor of Wellington's a, a huge privilege. And as a kid growing up in South of Chicago, not even something I anticipated. Uh, so that would be that one. Uh, my most important job is being a dad to two girls. Uh, so that's a really important job. My first job was I was a paper boy, delivered the Southland Times from age 11. To, I think kept going until I was about 17. Um, and I was a milk boy and a, a pack and save grocery person as well. Um, what was the worst job? Worst job, yeah. Worst job. Uh, to be honest, I haven't ever had a worse job. Um, I mean, okay, if you were to rank them and say, oh, technically that's the worst. Uh, when I was at university in Dunedin, I worked at a number of pack and saves around the, uh, the South Island, started out in Invercargill, in Christchurch at Rickerton every summer, uh, and and in Dunedin while I was at university as well and that was probably from time to time the worst job I think getting up on a Friday or Saturday morning had to get up at 4 o'clock for a 5 o'clock start or something uh, with the, the Dunedin tendency to go out and have a few beers from time to time uh, and quite a social living environment uh, meant that the, the job didn't work out with my um, social life if there are any, um, in, in your childhood years, if there are any mentors or people who have made such a, a huge influence on your life subsequently, um, any you want to give shout outs to or any way you want, want to acknowledge? I have to acknowledge my mum, uh, who I probably, through my teenage years, didn't acknowledge enough, uh, who worked really hard uh, just to make sure that her three boys, I guess, got through life uh, and got an opportunity. Um, and Mrs Everett, my Form 2 teacher at Tweedsmere Intermediate, um, who sort of set me on the path of, uh, you need to go to university, you probably need to go to this high school as well, and you need to be a bit more ambitious uh, about your own life. Um, and yeah, she was great, so I, I, um, I owe her a lot. Was that um, complete aside, but the sort of basis of uh, what I would call uh, creative accounting in terms of um, there are elements of society where people are excluded and just occasionally it's okay because the community looks after it and that the church hall badminton fund that should be $20 a year, it's okay. Is, is, is that sort of the, the may, perhaps the basis of some of that sense you're really interested in numbers of course so talking about creative accounting at a council level and I mean that professionally in grown up terms yeah and we have creative accounting or our crowdfunding to support social initi- uh, initiatives um, I'm you know, wholeheartedly supportive of um, look I've done and well, I've, I've been very lucky to benefit from I guess you could call that creative accounting or just general support in the past myself uh, look, um, uh, and this is an entire different story, I don't, I don't want to go off on a tangent, but um, when people say to me, oh, um, why do people deserve a handout? And I say, well, actually, this isn't a handout. I, you know, on a personal level, incredibly frustrated when someone says, I've worked hard my entire life. So, yeah, but you worked hard on your father's farm, or you worked hard on your family business, or you worked hard, but you also inherited half a million or a million dollars. Um, life's not straightforward it's complex um people start off in different positions um uh it's life can be a lot more difficult for someone that's uh, lived in a deprived situation or they've been the subject of physical or sexual violence um so some people just need a hand uh, and i'm that goes to the core of my beliefs and um i think society needs to understand that i've got a very quick bonus question for the the jobs question which is what, what is your dream job my dream job I'm in my dream job and yeah it's like look I've surpassed all expectations and and getting this job so that's I'm happy where I am what is your next dream job ha um probably uh to be a dad on holiday with his daughters uh and semi-retired or or relaxing um yeah sometimes I have to admit over the summer uh I thought uh is it all worth it uh, in terms of the commitment uh when you miss out on certain things so uh, what a, yeah, my, my next dream job would probably be an at-home dad. Might we, uh, might we see you go hang with your continuing your bromance with Paul? Ha! In uh, 
in, in the big house? Uh, I, I can honestly say I, I don't know. Um, I always thought as a young person, um, yeah, right, going right back to, I talked about Mrs Everett right, until I was 11, I thought well, one day I'd like to be in Parliament because that's where people made decisions about other people's lives and I wanted to make sure they made good ones. Um, I thought that would be the case, but having said that, uh, I'm I completely uncertain. Cool. Um, one of the things we ask all our um, guests as well is uh, what's a, an object or an item or a thing that you can't live without? And we do encourage you to think of it as an analogue thing as opposed to your cell phone. Uh, so assuming you get your cell phone, what's the next analogue thing you no, feel like you can't do without? My family. Uh, so that would be the most important thing They're not thing digital? No, they're not digital. So does it have to be digital? No, I'm kidding. No, good. Uh, no, they'd be my family. And um, yeah, it's probably the thing I miss most when I'm at work mm. too. Fair enough. We usually also ask our guests, where can we find you online? But basically, you can just start typing the word Justin, and there you are, which is pretty easy. Eh? And do you have a preferred platform for people to reach out to? Yeah, um, face-to-face in person. <laughs> it uh, tends to be much more fun than anything else. Um, yeah, so I mean, the best way to engage me, I'll oh, come down for a beer at Golding's Free Dive. Um, uh, or send me a text. If you want to get hold of me, and my phone number's online as well, send me a text, uh, because otherwise it'll be intercepted by uh, the many minions of staff that, that Joseph looks after. Did you say millions or minions? Minions. Minions. Yeah, because uh, they're actually physically <laughs> quite little, some of yeah, them. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And they're on brand too. They're yellow, aren't they? Yes, yellow, Excellent. yellow and nice. black and quirky. Nice. Victoria, where can we find you online? I am Victorian Purple uh, on uh, Twitter. And you can reach and connect with Twice Podcast on Twitter and Instagram at Twice Podcast. And me, David Binstead, on Twitter at David underscore Binstead. It just leaves me to thank my co-host, Victoria Spackman, for dropping in this afternoon. Thank you so much. It's been a great pleasure. Nice to see you both. I'm almost waiting for, like, the the extra plug. I, I can't finish with a draw, which is kind of like, it's just getting me. Well, how does it play out if I say, I can't wait for the opening of Te Oaha, which I'll be at, and um, it's going to be an amazing addition to our city. Uh, it'll add to the Cuba precinct, and uh, Victoria's going to do a sensational job as well. I think that's a bonus point. I'm really looking forward to having you there, Justin. <laughs> It'll be grand. <laughs> You're going to stand next to me, aren't you? Yes. Yeah, excellent. Uh, but also to thank, most gratefully, it's been a privilege to have Justin Lester, Wellington's Mayor, to hang with us this afternoon. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. And, and good luck with the rest of the episodes. And yeah, you're doing great work, David, so keep it up. Kia ora, it's David here, rounding out a second episode chatting with Wellington Mayor Justin Lester about livable cities, entrepreneurship, technology and some of the things that make him tick here in the pod cave at BizDojo Cowork Wellington. You may be pleasantly surprised after this short outro to find more of that same conversation but which didn't make the prime time edit. Make it a box set by catching Justin in his first episode chatting culture, affordability, cultural cool and civic engagement alongside fantastically well-received refreshment from local craft brewer Garage Project. Since beginning in 2015, this show has been a bootstrapped Love Not Money project as a showcase for organisations and businesses to see, or should that be hear, how audio can integrate with less intimate media formats. For the last year, I've been supported by two organisations and I want to share some info about them as they are hugely worthy of your patronage. Firstly, Caitlin, Patrice, Eloise, Paul Swifty Swift and Nick are just some of the wonderful humans who help BizDojo create and facilitate communities of talented, interesting and clever humans to pursue their passions. How do they do this? Simply through a national network of co-work spaces across New Zealand, where their goal is to cultivate communities of excellent humans in inclusive, friendly and respectful environments, with flexible options for small and large teams and contract-free plans to suit any business. I exhort you to develop and deliver your purpose by visiting one of their locations in New Zealand or by tripping your fingers over to bizdojo.com. I'm also grateful to the Collider Wellington crew who deliver a lively and diverse monthly program of largely free events. You can access world-class intelligence, hang with some of the smartest people on earth and learn something useful and immediately usable. Connect with thought leaders, emerging entrepreneurs and inspirational experts who are dedicated to supporting the growth of the greatest little city on earth, Wellington, New Zealand. For all the details, go to colliderwellington.com which is spelt Collider, 
wgtn.com. My mission is to support and amplify purpose-led people movements via novel digital media formats and platforms like this audio, but also with short form video. I'd be stoked for you to contact me to chat about integrating audio and video into your organization's marketing and comms plans, and I'd love to help. I've also started a Wellington local digital radio producers meetup to share learns and also perhaps fails. For both of those things, simply DM me via Twitter at David underscore Binstead. You can find show notes and links right in your podcast app of choice and via twicepodcast.com, which is where you'll also find today's episode match from the archives. Episodes 28 to 31, way, way, way back, are a series focused on technology and include women in tech, angel investing, sector support and development, and open source software development in a proprietary world. The next guest in your ears is Christine Langdon, CEO of The Good Registry. Rebecca Stewart is flying solo in the Podcave, chatting with Christine about her recently launched social enterprise, which magically simplifies gift giving to help good causes and also reduce waste. That publishes on the 14th of March and marks a return to fortnightly published episodes. I want to say a big thank you to you for lending us your ears to this one of more than 70 tightly edited conversations published since 2015. It means a lot. I hope the conversations offer inspiration and encouragement for making your own positive dents on society in whatever shape or form. Contribute your suggestions for future guests, feedback about episodes and any burning questions you may have by reaching us at Twice Podcast on Twitter and Instagram and via the contact page at twicepodcast.com. Cheers. I also should just include Joseph, who's been quietly sitting, helping us with the, uh, the alcohol beverage consumption, just to say thanks very much for hanging with us as well. Thank you. Awesome. I think he nodded off one stage. Nah, no, you've just been working him really hard. Um, Joseph, if you had to describe Justin in like a couple of sentences, like you see him every day, right? What, um, how, how would you sum him up? I'm always amazed with Justin how um, it doesn't matter who comes into the office and what subject they're talking about. He seems to <coughs> be familiar with it and able to converse with him on that subject, whether it's living wage, arts, business people. So that that's a thing I'm constantly um, bewildered by, that a person can know that many people. And he didn't even grow up here, come from Southland. I've lived here my whole life and I don't know as many people as Justin. And if, if there's a key thing you've learnt from him, what would that be? Yeah, I have learnt something from Justin. Um, I rush into Justin's office sometimes to tell him about the latest catastrophe, and after a few minutes, Justin's said, well, it's, it's, it's okay, you know, that'll work out, and so on. And I'm thinking, actually, yeah, I'll meekly go out of the office thinking it wasn't a catastrophe at all, it's, it's all okay, actually. So that is something that that calmness is, I've, I've learnt from him. And if there was something you'd like him to do differently, what would it be? It would be quite helpful for our office if Justin um, said yes to fewer people, so he booked less, fewer appointments in his diary, <laughs> but he basically says yes to everyone who wants to meet him, which of course is a very good asset for a mayor, but not so good if you're doing his diary. Uh, I think our time is done. I'll ask you first, Victoria. What's not getting your goat? So... Uh, this is not a plug, but it's actually dominating. What's dominating my life at the moment is uh, opening of uh, Te Oha, so that's in a couple of weeks, literally. And um, so, what's happening at the moment is I've got a lot of people around me supporting, uh, supporting us. Actually, it's not even around me; it's around the school and around um, what we're trying to achieve. And so, I'm really appreciative, which I think is the opposite of not getting of getting a goat. So, something you appreciate is the the people throwing their support and their weight behind what we're, what we're going to do so it's pretty it's pretty amazing to see this final push and Justin slightly differently for you what is getting your goat at the moment that you can talk about in public what's getting my goat at the moment um, nothing to be honest I, I, t- yeah, I, yeah. I, I tend on. to try and be a fairly positive individual um, and something's on my goat and I try to fix it um, so I'm happy with how things are uh, this isn't so much getting my goat this is perhaps an anti-plug I, I do feel for the, for, for the poor unfortunate Aucklanders where it just won't stop raining um, that has made life difficult down here because we're having an influx of people young people old people middle aged people who just want to move to a city where it's tropical windless and warm 
Uh, and that's <laughs> yeah, that's unfortunate for Auckland. It does make life difficult in terms of rental accommodation in our city, um, but it's probably a good thing. And um, long live uh, the tropical Wellington summer. Comedy gold. Comedy gold. Personal opinion, of course. What a bloody amazing city. Uh, it's a really cool city. I think we're all very lucky to live here. Um, and I say that... and. Uh, with a degree of bias um, being the mayor means you want to be an ambassador for for the city you live in Uh, but I also say that quite honestly in my own personal life as um, look I grew up in Invercargill my wife's from Timaru we were living in Heidelberg in Germany when we decided to come and move to Wellington Uh, not having any family here uh, but knowing that we wanted to bring our kids up here and a good number of friends uh, simply because it was the best city in the world we'd ever been to uh, and we didn't think anything compared uh, and, and that's why we chose to make our lives here and um, look very fortunate to be in the role that I'm in now uh, because I love the city Was it um, I read somewhere road tripping after university surfing in Lyle Bay you met your wife at university and then moved here in fact Yes spot on uh, and actually I was reflecting on that a few days ago uh, with one of the friends that um, we did that road trip on uh, bought a B- Bedford van uh, came across on the ferry and um, yeah, went surfing in Lowell Bay, went to the first one day international cricket match at Westpac Stadium. Um, an amazing time in Wellington. You quite like it as well, don't you, Victoria? I'm a big fan. I've, I've been here a long time now. Um, I was away, I moved here when I was 10 and went away four or five years after university, but pretty much other, otherwise been here. If I had to ask both of you personal favourite spots that you're willing to share with the public in terms of Wellington City that either have meaning or you enjoy visiting or wherever where would you say Justin? Scorching Bay uh, that's where I proposed to my wife Uh, just a wonderful bay beautiful uh, stunningly beautiful Um, and sitting there and yeah having an ice cream eating fish and chips or just relaxing in the sun uh, is lovely I love um running around some of the reserves around town Mount Victoria Pole Hill Gully on the mountain bike um, anywhere on the waterfront Victoria any special spots? Yeah being a water babe I like also like the water so I am um, always enjoy that walk from kind of Shed 5 round through to Oriental Bay um, around the back of Tapapa and things that's one of my favourites even in um, even in Auckland weather, it's really lovely to be out there. And there's so many different things that you can see from there. You know, you can see quite right across the harbour. You can, you know, you look back and you look at the city and then obviously the water below you. And often there's, you know, rays or the occasional shark or something in there. So I really enjoy that wander around there. And then, of course, because I'm a culture nut, I love being in and amongst the various culture things. So, you know, the theatres and the museums and art galleries and that kind of thing that we... Um, have a plethora of your um, I think it was possibly your tweet this morning uh, talking about Tapapa turning 20 inspired me to search out what other things were a certain age in the city and Solace in the Wind uh, the capital's most well known sculpture turns 10 today Mm. which is pretty incredible so uh, yeah it was only supposed to be there temporarily though wasn't it yeah yeah and he had another sculpture down on the floating pontoon by the diving board as well um, which is no longer there and equally very beautiful sculpture I have no dirt on Justin <laughs> none at all there was a rubbish incident where Victoria tweeted me about the, the, the level of rubbish on her street after a, a windy Wellington storm um, that's <laughs> sort of dirt but we did clean it up you did clean it up it was quite a quick response I'm surprised well, you remember that yeah. but yes this is, this no, is exactly true <laughs> Oh, I don't think I tweeted you. I think I just tweeted the council and Maybe. you, you I, responded. I intercepted the yeah, tweet. It was it was very talented. 